The Grammys, BAFTAs, Oscars, Emmys, and even the MTV Music Video Awards are a few of the notable award shows that have penetrated their way into the mainstream, and all of which are easily a thousand times more relevant in their standing of judging their appropriate entertainment medium than the Game Awards, which itself largely apes the basic style of those larger shows while in turn seeking to overthrow them, not in just viewership, which it already does, but notoriety, especially with Jeff's own stated target, the Oscars. But in doing so, it adopts and exacerbates many of their shortcomings. Lindsay Ellis, of course, has a great video on the Oscars and another on how targeting one might manifest itself in a film, citing Crash as the catalyst for its most recent evolution, adding racial tension onto other Oscar bait categories like films focused on disability, the industry, and historical dramas focused on the Holocaust and war. Which makes sense given how, as far as I can tell, specific categories like those in writing are judged solely by writers. And given a judge's length of membership, there's going to be some level of consistency. Of course, games lack an equivalent term, but video game Oscar bait in relation to things like the Game Awards is a fairly obvious idea, and while the nominees themselves might be wide in variety, the winners tend to be high budget and realistic looking games focused on cinematic narratives. Sony's western games have even become the butt of the joke, with an added stipulation of over the shoulder cameras to the point of God of War being crammed into that mold despite detrimental effects to its gameplay, yet it still won Game of the Year in 2018. So while 2020's Game Awards had many hopeful Hades might win for its quality and employee-friendly working conditions, Animal Crossing for helping maintain social interactions during a lockdown, or just Doom and Final Fantasy VII Remake 4, despite being long-running series, still pushing the genre forward and in new directions. Yet it was still unsurprising to see The Last of Us Part II take home seven awards including Best Direction in Game of the Year, well after it had been criticized for poor writing, deceptive marketing, outdated 2013 style game design, but most of all, a toxic work environment so bad it overworked at least one employee to the point of being hospitalized. The reasoning of which is simple. The Game Awards aren't a celebration of games, but a popularity contest that aims to legitimize games towards not only the more casual fans of games, but more importantly, those that don't engage with them. One of the most transparent ways it does this is using big name celebrities like Gal Gadot and Christopher Nolan as presenters despite zero relevancy towards the medium, while known celebrity gamers like The New Day or Terry Crews, who have been in games and done a few related streams, are ignored alongside some of the most prominent newcomers such as Korane, who will likely never be seen at the Game Awards. Because just like naming New Horizons Game of the Year, it goes against the image they're trying to present, and given the audience they're trying to appease, a move with few ramifications. Further propping up that disparity is the means by which it presents its awards. Go through any nomination within the show and what you'll find is a high generalization of game genres and development departments. For instance, what is the difference between action-adventure and general action when a linear shooter like The Last of Us 2 occupies the former category, but others like Doom Eternal and Half-Life Alex only occupy the latter? Does a small sandbox segment really make the difference? If so, why when it's so little of the experience? and when other action-adventure nominees have a larger emphasis on adventure. Why create this confusion when you could have best shooter as an award? If games have to release within a set time frame to qualify for specific awards, then why pre-2020 games like Among Us and Mortal Kombat 11 win best multiplayer in fighting instead of being nominated for best ongoing, which was itself left to be dominated by shooters? Why are best VR and mobile even awards when those aren't even genres but platforms? If the lines are so vague, what's to stop older games from being nominated just for being part of an HD remaster? And why clump best sim or strategy together if the category winner was the only simulation game being nominated? There's no real consistency here, and by creating all-encompassing categories it creates a narrowed view of the industry when genre and technical awards might offer games that would otherwise be ignored a chance to shine. Instead their awards are sidelined by rapid-fire awards with no special host, no trophy, and no fanfare. Meaning the show's bigger awards where you actually do get to see footage of the game being nominated are left to being dominated by the same eight or so games. This not only devalues the other games being discussed, but the work put into them as well, something Jeff seems to take little issue with as he was willing to put best score as the first award for the pre-show, despite it possibly being the most accessible form of entertainment available and all while music performances occupy their own space of the award show itself, something that plays into most perception of games being subject to auteur theory, with a single individual or the studio 
themselves claiming responsibility for the final product over the individuals who made it. While the Oscars themselves can certainly be self-masturbatory and ignorant of genre films, they not only focus on the film as a craft, but are largely judged by those involved in the industry, including previous Oscar winners where there's an assumed understanding of what grants something its quality. As a result, a lot of nominations end up being more nuanced in category. Best costume design, actor, actress, animated feature, VFX, and even adapted and original screenplays are just a few unique awards up for debate that all celebrate the individual accomplishments that went into making a film whole. This is partially why combining sound editing and mixing in 2021 muddies the waters as one possibly devalues another's work along with their specific craft. The Game Awards judges themselves aren't developers, actors, or possibly even musicians. Rather, they're media outlets and influencers like Game Informer, Vice, and for some reason, What Culture, which may write about game development and grievances, but are unlikely to have participated in it. From this ineptitude, the show reaches its current state where categories for combat design or 3D animation are unlikely to ever be seen lest they draw the ire of others for misrepresenting that craft, thus making names like Ryoto Suzuki obscure to only the most devout fans and fellow developers. And even if such categories like best song were introduced in 2020 away from best score, let's face it, Bury the Light would have just lost to whatever The Last of Us 2 was offering anyways. Because what's more likely to be seen is those more generalized influencers and publications representing their more simplistic ideal of games as art, with core exposure to games being mainstream titles melding with the insecurities game journalists have about the industry, and their occupation as a whole, manifesting itself through their selected winners. Thus, why many find the show difficult to take seriously, even when it's breaking that perception of realism favoritism because they just give it to whatever's popular anyways. If there's one strength the Oscars and other shows have going for them, it's that they're focused. You might see a few actors or hosts put on a bit, but there's no new film announcements to be seen, and because of the runtime, when a nominee is on display, accompanying footage is able to showcase tangible examples of why it's being nominated, which is admittedly something more difficult to convey with footage alone for interactive mediums like video games. But come winners, there might even be a speech given about something an individual finds important. While it's easy to complain this makes the show more about looking back than forward, doing otherwise would distract from the fact that this is, after all, a celebration of one's work that highlights whose work to look forward to in the future, and it might even bring much needed attention to lesser known films and positively impact their revenue. But the Game Awards isn't about that. And very little of the show is dedicated to awarding developer accomplishments as the rest of the show largely turns into a giant promotional event that more so distracts from the former than attracts. Because let's face it, if the Game Awards didn't turn itself into a second E3 where you get to see Sephiroth and Smash among other reveals, while you question why Elden Ring won most anticipated game when all we've seen is a JPEG, an overwhelming number of people would have stopped watching long ago. Having both along with other less relevant categories and constant rotation for three hours is great for views. It's what helps keep the show profitable outside sponsors, but nothing really gets a chance to shine as a result because nothing's given the time of day it deserves, and when they are, their length and when they're introduced seem so specific with how little it impacts what people are going to the show for that it's no wonder people consider things like the Latin segment a bathroom break, because they get 5 seconds of footage and tune out immediately. It's so bad you'd be forgiven for not noticing one of these breaks highlighted the world's first FDA approved video game, and its creators didn't get to present a single award, nor were they part of any nominations. It could be so much better, but it just isn't. While it's easy to point to another video game circle jerk with the BAFTAs as a clear example of what the Game Awards should strive to be due to its sheer focus on the craft, Jeff still needs to keep the show profitable, and the disparity in views between these two could not be greater. The Game Awards might possibly be the single largest award shows, but to be as revered as its ilk it needs to change, and Jeff has already shown how that could happen. His own Summer Games Fest shows there's other ways to celebrate the devs behind these games and still reveal new titles. You can easily divide the core focus of esports community and developer into their own days, or a single day where those segments occur in succession, making it one big event, all before being capped off with the award show itself. That way those segments aren't fighting for time, and if anything you can fit more specific game announcements into those time slots. They might even house more specific awards in the case of things like esports, while others like devs or community might be better able to present their current projects or ongoing efforts thanks to the additional time 
time allotted. Such segments need not always be live either, just the awards themselves. They might even make those they featured hosts later in the award shows where they can have a platform to promote themselves and their earlier segment. Given Jeff's position, the core award show would still juxtapose itself with game reveals to keep viewership high, undoubtedly keeping the biggest announcements there instead of the earlier segments. But decluttered, it would be better able to give all awards the time and reverence they deserve. Winners get more time to accept rewards and make statements, and you might even get to include a highlight reel of everything that happened before the final show itself. Devs and hosts might even get to do cute little skits for the show. It would still be a superficial circle jerk. It's unlikely devs themselves will ever be active voters in the awards, but it would at least show a higher level of regard for gaming as a whole and people can better focus on the things they're specifically interested in watching. They even get more content to engage with. Those are pretty lofty ideals though. There's a decent chance those watching this can think up better, more viable options. Even these thoughts are just a few I've heard from friends mixed with my own. At the end of the day, the Game Awards has so many fantastic opportunities to show gaming's possibilities, yet it so rarely takes them. Instead, by action devaluing a multitude of games and those that engage with them so it can grant awards to industry veterans so self-assured in victory that events like The Last of Us 2 winning Game of the Year don't even phase Druckmann. Because it was, like for even the audience, expected. Because over the years, the Game Awards has made its message clear. Indies are incapable of ever reaching the heights of AAA games regardless of quality, and will only be acknowledged when met with an explosive fanbase. And it is willing to damage the perception of other titles willing to indulge in their status as games by having them constantly lose out to those that are also trying to be movies, even if they're really bad movies. But perhaps what most didn't expect was The Last of Us 2 to be the only game to win more than two awards and by a margin of five. And unfortunately, after that first or second win, for a lot of people, the tone of the show was already set. Game development is already notoriously damaging within AAA studios, but when a game made by people hoping it would fail just so there might be a modicum of better care towards employees is placed on such a high pedestal, it shatters hope and only furthers the normalization of that behavior. After all, you sold millions and won the granddaddy of awards. Good for you, the system works. It's such a contrast to winners like Hello Games where harsh feedback and good faith turned No Man's Sky into such a beloved game, so much so it won 2020 best ongoing game, clearly to the shock of Sean Murray. Good rewards require good work, and his team learn the hard way how much it pays off. But it seems journalists and larger developers don't care. To them, if you can legitimize games to others, who cares if you had to break a few lives to do it?